Are you navigating the intricate maze of Medicare? Each part of Medicare offers distinct benefits, and understanding the differences can be like unlocking a mystery. Did you know that the choices you make could have a lasting impact on your healthcare journey? Stay tuned as we unravel the puzzle of Medicare Parts A, B, C, and D, each harboring its own set of rules and rewards. Prepare yourself for a revelation that could change the way you view your healthcare options and benefits. Get ready to discover the secrets behind each Medicare part. Let's explore the essential components of Medicare, parts A, B, C, and D. I'll help you understand their functions and the important steps you need to take. Navigating Medicare's enrollment process can be challenging with its confusing mix of parts and letters that can lead to expensive mistakes. Many find this system daunting, but I'm here to help you avoid confusion. Our goal today is to simplify these complexities, providing you with a clear understanding that will serve as a solid foundation as you approach key moments like turning 65, retiring, or entering Medicare for the first time. Get ready to replace confusion with clarity as we dive into the key aspects of Medicare. Medicare Parts A and B together form what's known as traditional or original Medicare. These are the two original components of Medicare since its inception. Medicare Part A provides hospital insurance, covering inpatient, hospital stays, skilled nursing facilities, hospice, and home health care. For most individuals who have lived and worked in the United States for 10 years, 40 quarters, or have a spouse meeting this criteria, Part A comes without a premium. However, it's crucial to note that Medicare Part A does not cover long-term custodial care in nursing homes. Additionally, without any supplemental Medicare insurance, you'll be responsible for deductibles and coinsurance costs under Part A. As of 2024, the Medicare Part A deductible is $1,632. Medicare Part B is a key part of original Medicare, and it primarily serves as your medical or doctor coverage. It extensively covers a variety of services, including doctor's office visits, physician's fees, diagnostic testing, and ambulance services. It also takes care of preventive services like screenings and vaccines, as well as durable medical equipment such as wheelchairs and walkers. Additionally, Medicare Part B provides coverage for many medications that are not self-administered, typically those administered in a doctor's office or hospital setting. Many people are surprised to learn that Medicare Part B is not premium free, especially as they approach the age of 65. In 2024, the standard monthly premium for Medicare Part B is set at $174.70. However, this amount can be higher for individuals who are classified as high income earners. Alongside the premium, Medicare Part B also includes a deductible, which is $240 per calendar year. Once this deductible is met, Medicare Part B covers 80% of your eligible medical services, leaving you responsible for the remaining 20%. This cost-sharing aspect underscores the importance of considering a supplemental insurance policy, especially for those without additional coverage. Most people become eligible for original Medicare starting on the first day of the month in which they turn 65. This also includes certain individuals under 65 who have disabilities. Generally, you need to enroll in Medicare Parts A and B during the seven-month initial enrollment period, IEP, to avoid late enrollment penalties. This IEP begins three months before your 65th birthday month, includes the month you turn 65 and extends three months after that month. However, if you're still working at 65, you often can and should postpone your Medicare enrollment without facing penalties. This is applicable as long as you are actively employed and have health insurance through your employer and your employer has 20 or more employees. In this case, you don't have to enroll in Medicare upon turning 65. You can enroll at any point while you're still working up until you retire. Moreover, after retiring, you have an eight month period to enroll in Medicare without incurring a penalty using the Special Enrollment Period, SEP. Let's now discuss Medicare Part C, often referred to as Medicare Advantage. This is an optional component of Medicare that you might consider enrolling in. Medicare Advantage plans are essentially managed care plans provided by private insurance companies under contract with Medicare. They present an alternative method for receiving your Medicare benefits. 
Rather than using the traditional Medicare Parts A and B provided by the government, you would be enrolled in a managed care plan, such as an HMO or PPO, through a private insurer. To be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan, you must be enrolled in both Medicare Parts A and B and continue paying the Medicare Part B premium. These plans must cover the same services as traditional Medicare Parts A and B, but have the flexibility to establish their own cost-sharing requirements, including co-pays and co-insurance, for which you are responsible. As managed care plans, Medicare Advantage plans typically operate with a network of health care providers, meaning you'll have a specific list of doctors, providers, and hospitals that accept your plan. Many Medicare Advantage plans offer the appealing feature of having no monthly premium in most areas. Additionally, some of these plans include extra benefits like dental, vision, or hearing coverage, which are not typically covered by traditional Medicare. Furthermore, a significant number of Medicare Advantage plans conveniently incorporate Part D prescription drug coverage directly into the plan providing a more comprehensive healthcare package under one plan. Transitioning to prescription drug coverage, we come to Medicare Part D. This segment of Medicare specifically covers prescription medications, including those you would pick up at a pharmacy. Part D is available only through private insurance companies that have received federal government approval. You can access Part D benefits either through a standalone Medicare Part D drug plan alongside traditional Medicare or via a Medicare Advantage plan that includes prescription drug coverage. Medicare Part D plans vary in the medications they cover and the costs associated with these covered medications. However, even the most affordable Part D plans are required to cover a wide range of generic and brand name drugs. Additionally, Part D plans offer coverage for certain vaccines like the shingles shot, which are not covered under Medicare Part B. Choosing the right Part D plan can be crucial, and I plan to delve deeper into this topic in upcoming videos, guiding you on how to select the best Part D plan for your needs. It's also important to note that delaying your Medicare Part D enrollment without having other creditable prescription drug coverage may result in a lifelong late enrollment penalty. Therefore, even if you're currently on few or no medications, it's generally advisable to enroll in at least a basic low-cost Part D drug plan to avoid these penalties. As you approach Medicare eligibility, you'll encounter a multitude of advertisements and information about various Medicare plans. These plans typically fall into two main categories, Medicare Supplement Plans, which complement your traditional Medicare benefits, and Medicare Advantage Part C plans, as we've recently discussed. Each type of plan has its own set of advantages and disadvantages, and the best choice for you will depend on a variety of factors. I've created a video comparing the pros and cons of Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement plans, which I recommend watching for more detailed insights. However, one of the most beneficial steps you can take is to consult with a licensed, independent Medicare insurance broker you trust. A reputable broker can assist you in reviewing all available plans and their pricing in your area. But it's crucial to educate yourself about Medicare and the different plan options before consulting with an insurance broker. While many brokers have your best interests in mind, this is not universally true. And being informed is key to avoiding enrollment mistakes that could have significant long-term implications for you. Feel free to subscribe to the channel where we share a wealth of content on various financial topics that you might find useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. I always appreciate hearing from you and value your input. Until next time, thanks for watching WealthWise Finance.